This is the video of how to remove the head, the timing chain. Um, well, I'm not going to remove the entire timing chain, but the camshaft, head, and uh, cylinder jugs check to see if uh, the reason why I don't have compression. Um, one thing you want to check to make sure your timing is correct. Not your timing, but your valve lash. Um, but before you can do all that, you have to take a few things off. You don't have to take the exhaust off. I just did that because I am taking the head off because I already checked the valve lash. That's, that's not the issue. Um, take the seat off on your rear tail light. There's two, two bolts here. Uh, this is for, by the way, this is for an 86 uh, Honda Rebel CMX uh, 250 Charlie. Um, take these two off right here. The seat will then come off and wedge off. Then you have the main seat here. You loosen these two bolts, this seat will wedge off. Then you'll have a Phillips head screw right here holding your tank in. So with the grommet right there. Then you have two other grommets on the front, which is near your fork. You take those two off and you take your vent line that goes in the bottom of the tank that hooks it to your carburetor. Loosen that and take that off. And then you make sure your pet cock is off the fuel supply. And make sure you have a rag handy because it will, um, fuel will come out. Uh, you can have an option just by putting, if you want to make it nice and clean, you can put a little tube here. Mine's messing it. But if you have an extra or a piece of fuel line or whatever, you can take and pull this off, run into a water bottle or whatever, and loosen the strain screw off. It will then drain the line, the fuel filter, and the petcock. And as long as you have it off and on the tank position, it will make it where there's no fuel spillage. If you don't like gasoline anywhere, um, so that's that's that. Next thing is um, you want to check your valve lash. Is you have these two big um, flathead. Bolts. I mean, yeah, they go into the engine here and access the plate covers. Uh, what you do is you obviously take them off, let you loose your rotary tidy, um, and you have to rotate the, the motor. Um, to line up the timing marks. Make sure your your spot plugs are out. Otherwise, you'd be fighting compression. Uh, in my case, didn't matter. <laughs> I don't got compression. I think it's a head gasket or a bad cylinder or or, or something. But both of them have no compression whatsoever. Um, so I got to check what's going on there. Anyways, so I'm going to tell you, show you how to get into your, your bike here. Let's see if I can get this. Now you get the, what we're looking for is the timing marks here. I'm going to keep rotating it and I'm going to look for a T with a vertical dash and a T. And as a notch, you should be able to see it on top there. That notch is what you line up the T with. First one, coming up to the second one. There it is. Just use your line up that top mark, line up. Alright, now since it's facing forward, that should be cylinder two. So you have a cylinder one, which is on the left hand side of the bike or you can say driver's side if you're familiar with vehicles in America um, <clears throat> the way to check is to make sure that it is at top dead center in cylinder 2 you should be able to move so they're they're loose so they're you can check your valve lash with that way you just loosen this bolt the lock nut 
and you finger tight it with the feeler gauge going in between the the rocker arm and the, the valve spring and then you lock it down um, type dead center little not the little C is going to be facing the front of the bike type dead center for the rear will be facing the rear of the bike just to complete 180 degree offset um, now to remove um, well, I forgot to tell you, to remove the valve cover, guys, cover, obviously, you got to take the spark plugs off, unplug the, the coils, move them out of the way, take the valve cover off, two bolts to hold it on. Um, anyways, we're, uh, we're going on to a big step here. <laughs> we're removing this whole thing right here. Um, first, got to move the exhaust, which is two bolts for either side, for cylinder one and cylinder two, for the exhaust. Once you get those two loose, uh, these little brackets should just fall off. Move them out of the way. Don't need them. Well, keep them. Don't destroy them. You will need them later. Put everything back together. Um, loosen that bolt. When this is all mounted on the frame, this bolt is facing down. So in other words, you get access to it just by merely going underneath the bike, which is right here. Anyways, next step is to loosen the exhaust on the mufflers. Loosen these two up, which is hanging on these exhaust brackets right here um, once you do that and that bolt is loose you gotta spread them like that a bit and then they'll come off the bike pretty very very easily um, now next step is in the book uh, you have to remove these rocker arm brackets in a certain order, otherwise you can warp everything. That's the order you want to remove the brackets. And that's yeah, the rocker arm brackets. And then also take note your head bolts, one, two, and three. You got one, two, and three. Loosen them and tighten them. You do the same order. Uh, same thing here. This is how you loosen them. Remember, this is for an '86. These bikes were made pretty much forever. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, Chinese copies. So uh, just remember when you take in your timing chain off, you're gonna have two timing bolts right here. You gotta loosen these up, which are on the back side of this bike uh, on the head. Get the top one, which is behind this intake which is that's got to come off too and that there oh uh, special note on this this intake when it's all put together this is wedged in this is basically a flange once you loosen this clamp you take a flathead or some something where you won't tear this rubber and you just wedge it around until you can get it to go into the box. Once it goes into the box and gets past this flange, you can take your carburetor off. So make sure you take this this off gently. It's plastic. Um, there's two bolts that hold the carburetor bracket on, on the other side. Now you can see it. This bracket that has the capable adjustments and everything on it for your accelerator. Uh, what you do is you first you take off the choke and you tilt it that way. So, a pair of pliers around, around me. Anyways, that's how you do it. Alright, so I loosened it up. It should just come off easily. As long as your choke is off. Choke is on, a little more pain about it. It just comes out. Like, like so. Now it's going to be a bitch to get back together. Anyways, got the idea on that one. So leave that alone. Now you tilt this carb like that, like so. 
reason being is you need access to the screws on the other side of the bracket. I guess somebody on mine thought it would be cool to make one of the flathead <laughs> and one of Phillips. What I like to do is once I get this bracket off, is then rotate it back and then take my cables off. Do not try to take these cables off with this bracket on. You'll be fighting it all day long. Unless you're some kind of He-Man and you want to make yourself, make it harder for yourself, go right ahead. Easy way is just to undo the bracket, then take the cables off. Remember to put your screws back in the card. Easier to keep everything together as one piece. Now that they're removed, the cables, and I got caught in there somehow. There go. Now if you move the carburetor can come out. Since there's fuel still in mine, gas will go will come out if I don't keep it level. Oh, forgot. It's one little hose in the bottom. Take it off. I'm gonna take it off right now. Alright, it's off. Um, if you're going to rebuild this, it's not that difficult. The bowl comes off, it's like a regular carburetor with the bowl with the float. Um, I recommend soaking it in chem dip. You can purchase it at Walmart. It's uh, $12. That's what it looks like. Um, you just soak it in there for a few hours. Depending on how bad it is. It says only up to four hours to soak it on the back. Um, I've soaked mine 24. It came out pretty clean after everything was said and done. I gotta clean this all up. But all that rust is what came out of the carburetor when I was chiseling it. So, yeah. That's the reason why I had to sit in there for so long. But, anyways, um, the chem that does work, uh, it does work wonders. Uh, I cleaned my jet. Um, after you use the chem dip, you're supposed to use carburetor cleaner. And clean the carb up and get all the residue off of it. Otherwise, it will clog again. <laughs> or it will varnish your spark plugs, one of the two. Either way, not a friendly situation to deal with. So, next step is remove intake, remove this bracket that's holding this head on, and then start tackling the. the um, the brackets for the the springs on the valves. Um, always hard for the rocker arms. Get those taken care of. Back. All right, I'm back. Um, it has stupid wires. These are actually the coils. Probably just to cut off. Anyways, you got four bolts. You got one here, one here, and just the opposite on the other side of this intake. Be careful, this does have a rubber, not to damage it. Uh, one thing to note, I highly recommend just nick your battery. You don't want to have your fingers caught up in this chain and it's starting to kick on because this thing's 30 years old. Or if there's anything mechanically inclined or because you have bad luck. Um, if you have any of those, or if you're smart, just disconnect the battery. Alright, so you loosen the bolts. Intake should relatively easily. Maybe some finesse. I guess let's take the clamp off right now since it's in the way. It'll come right straight off. There we go. And there's your intake. Uh, remember, replace those O-rings. They're cheap. Preventive maintenance. We get this thing apart. Uh, make sure that this rubber isn't cracked on the outside. It doesn't really matter too much about the inside. It isn't cracked on the outside and having air leaks. If it does, toss it. Get another one. Otherwise, you'll be dealing with it all day long. I don't know what this came off of here. So it fell on my foot. 
I think it's two under the battery, an old battery cap. Anyways, continuing on. One note to find out. <clears throat> Head bolts are some are different sizes. The ones that hold in the brackets are 12s for this 86. The ones down in here. That, she says 10 on it. It's actually a 10, obviously. Anyways, don't strip it. Just a mental note. On mine, they felt like they were breaking before they would break loose. Um, there's not much torque on. Maybe you can take them off with a quarter inch. So if that tells you something. It, this might be 20, 25. But it feels like it's going to break and it snaps and it springs. So uh, just pat on through it. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues with rusting, um, except the, the head bolt maybe on the front. Uh, if you want the safe, you can spray some WD-40 on it, but I doubt you'll have any issues. Everything else is internal, which is always going to be saturated in oil. So it's just going to be on there because of heat. So I'll show you the next step. All right. You want to pull these off, um, be gentle, you can use a flathead, and do that, just tap it, don't wedge it in here, just use this, and just tap it, or we can put a piece of wood or something right here, be careful these fins too, fragile, so it should just come off, you can't get the wiggle off, um, so you just like this, just tap it a little bit, on, on the fin, and it'll give you enough leverage to get it up. And that's it. I'll show you the next step. I'm just going to type that on there. Okay, so I did have to wedge it up a little bit more. Um, it was just in there. A little frozen from the tolerances. Um, so I just took a screwdriver like this and wedged it up inside this hole right here so it wouldn't damage the, the plate here. Alright, got those off. The next step is to find the bolt. Pretty straightforward. Take bolt off. Rotate 360 degrees, and there should be another bolt. Take that bolt off. That does is it separates the timing gear from your camshaft. This way, you can slide the timing gear towards you or the driver's side of the bike, the left side. And then once you do that, once you remove those two bolts, then you can remove the tensioner and the cam adjuster. Once you get those two done then the whole thing should slide towards you. Make sure not to drop bolts once you start getting this far into it, into the, the crank. Uh, if you don't need to take this head off and just try and replace the chain or the camshaft. Otherwise it becomes a major pain in the ass. Um, anyways, that's how I get to this, but when you're trying to loose it, it might rotate on you. If that's the case, since you already have these covers off, voila, problem solved. Sure. Well, you get the idea. I do it with two hands. See, I got it off. It's a simple bolt. Keep track of everything. Obviously, it's marked front, front. Um, keep them separate what, they, what they're supposed to be. Uh, because if everything is cool and hunky dory with your cam and your bearings, and you're just replacing the pistons and the jugs, and you don't need to do anything on the top end of the, the head, you really don't want to spend much money. So, let's go ahead and rotate this. Since I can do this with one hand, you know. there we are. Yeah, right where I need you. <laughs> Comes 
right off. Voila. Oh, wait, okay, this one. Yeah, it's just. What the hell that is. Anyways, so now it comes forward. So you can see how it moves towards you. Don't do that yet. I'll lead by example. Anyways, I'm going to take those two bolts off right here. Again, like I said, these two. To loosen this timing chain up the tensioner that's tightening up this chain. Um, I'm all for if you don't have to replace it, spend money or fix it, don't do it. I'm looking probably just to ride this bike for a year or two and flip it and then sell it. Maybe the wire already have invested into it. Bought it for 315. Um, had a bad motor. Uh, it cranks. Uh, it doesn't fire though. Let's just stick a lot of oil into the damn thing, get compression. But um, carburetor was dirty, tank was completely fucking dirty. Um, everything on it was in good shape. The tires in good shape. Uh, they're a bit old. They're about nine or ten years old. Um, maybe something about hunking door around town, but I wouldn't take this <laughs> cross country or across the state. Maybe it'd work for 20 miles as long as it wasn't going super fast. But this is an in-town bike, anyways. It's a real Honda Rebel. So you're not going to go but 70 max. Uh, unless you change out the rear sprocket. Or, if you're really ingenuous, you change out the front sprocket on the transmission. And you could easily go 90. Um, takeoff goes to shit on you. But um, I'm all for it. As if I can keep up with traffic, I'm much happier than trying to take off and have a dragster. I'd rather just, I uh, hope these things aren't dragsters to begin with, but anyways, um, I'd rather be a little bit slower on takeoff than um, be slow on the highway and have it be ran over. Well, I'm going to do that. Uh, also, too, I'm going to remove these bolts on the head here that's holding everything on. Um, so, talk to you later. One mental note. This is a brass, brass washers. Kind of frozen on that one. They do not have an O ring washer, like I said, in number A, the top one. Um, could be just different ear model. Anyways, two, bottom one says it's a bolt. I'm oh, sorry, a nut on a bolt. Uh, mine were both bolts going into the, the head. So, just so you know, uh, it's loose now. Once it's loose, um, it should be down in. It, it's going to be down in there. I just bumped it up. I just bumped it, and it and it shot up a little bit, about maybe an inch. Uh, so now the chain is loose. Um, sorry, I said I fell with it more. Okay, that's where it looked like. See, it's stiff in there. Um, once you loosen this bolt on the bottom, it shoots up. That's what happened. Uh, it was just stuck in there a little bit. Uh, some of them, you just loosen the bolt, you don't take it off. And then it slides all the way up. It just has like a slide pin friction. Uh, this one, apparently, you just take it off. Uh, anyways, I'm taking the jugs off more than likely. So all this stuff is getting taken off one way or another. Keep track of everything. Alright, I just took the chain off the cam. The cam should now be somewhat free. Um, this is in there somehow still. I gotta look in the book how to get that off. Um, but the cam, let's see if we can pry it a little bit on this half moon so it doesn't damage it. I don't know. Let's do this piece right here. Um, yeah, see now it's loose. Comes out of this little notch. You see these little pieces here? They go into these notches. So you know they're lined up vertically. Alright, you want to make sure you don't drop this chain down inside the motor. How much it would suck? Tremendously. So, uh, you want to tie it up somehow. 
uh, so it doesn't go down in there. Uh, paper clip, hang, hanger, string, wire, anything we can fish it back up if you go oops. Now as you see, I have my safety safety wire here. Or anyways, now comes to the part to pull off the bearings. Yeah, yeah, that didn't go as planned. Anyways, there's the bearings. They right in. Key the track on. Necessarily have to remove both bearings. You just remove one of them. Get the thing out. You want to rotate it until the lobes are where they can fit through the gear, which doesn't look as easy as it is. Oh, sorry. It has to go that way. My mistake. I'm going to take this off. Anyways, push the camshaft to the passenger side of the vehicle, which is the right side. Um, if you're facing in the front. I'm sorry, facing like you're going to drive it. Anyways, do that, and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. I just noticed this. Um, if you rotate the, the engine, uh, you'll see the light here. See, so you got a bigger notch on either side to take the, it apart. Rotate until you get it the notch on top, that's where you can get the lobes out. Makes everything easier. Okay, my mistake, you gotta take the chain off the gear first. Then, tighten, put the string around the timing chain so it doesn't fall in. My mistake. Base what it looks like, once you get it out. Just a good, simple gear. Turn chains off. The cam's out. Now take those last three bolts off. They're already loose. And the whole head should just pop off. Uh, they say also if you can, if you have compression, uh, you can put the spark plugs back in, connect the battery up. Once you loosen all the head bolts, and if you can't get the head, head off, um, crank it. And the compression with all the valves closed should pop the the head off. Should, but mine I can't do that. So I'm, hopefully I can get this off. As you can see, I flip up and drop the bolt in the intake. Easiest way to get that out. It's a trusty magnetic mechanic tool. Alright, <laughs> it's not magnetic. Where are the other bolts at? Let's test them. Yeah, they are magnetic, so why is it not coming out? Might be wedged in there. Right. Anyways, you see the picture. Don't do that. Alright. I'm pretty sure I got the bolt out. Um, just had to fiddle with it a little more, and it got it came out with the parallel nose and the mac mechanics, the magnet tip tool. Um, from this point forward, this should come off um, as long as you loosen it from the frame. Uh, I also like to keep all bolts, no matter how big, how small, back where they came from, even if I'm not fastened to anything. I'm gonna do the same thing with the head. Um, when I get everything put back together, I'm just gonna loosely put everything, uh, set everything inside the head and mark everything where it's supposed to be in baggies. Uh, last thing you want to do is replace something you didn't need to replace because it was already good to begin with. Um, this only has 9,000 miles on it and has no compression. So, I'm going to pull the head off. Let's see if I can do it. Set this camera. Hopefully you can see it. Do it. Pretty sure 
you can. Yeah, that's how you lift it up. Um, gotta figure out how to get these bolts off. I'm trying to figure out this piece why it comes into here. What else am I missing? I'll let you know.